Hi friends, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Web Dev. Welcome to my new course learning about HTTP basics. So it is important for us to learn about the what is meant by HTTP and how the HTTP protocol actually works in the web. So before continuing to this backend thing, so first we will have a clear understanding about this HTTP. As you already aware of this one, HTTP's full form is hypertext transfer protocol so this one all, all of them able to know but actually how the http works and how the web actually works in the internet so so many people doesn't have the basic idea so especially the ua people the front end people who comes who works ex, uh, especially on the front end how the web server and the web client interactions will be there and all those things so most of the people doesn't have the any uh, doesn't have the idea so let's try to learn about this HTTP thing and the basic idea behind this HTTP, how that HTTP works in the web. Let's try to have a basic idea. Before continuing to this one, let's have a brief introduction about this HTTP, how the HTTP actually works in the internet. Let's try to see it. Hypertext transfer protocol. As I already told you, the full form for this HTTP is hypertext transfer protocol. It is an application layer protocol for transmitting hypermedia documents such as HTML. So we already discussed in our HTML series that HTML is a hypertext documents or hypermedia documents, whatever it may be. So if you know about this hypertext document means which contains links inside that document and it will navigate through the HTML pages. So that is the main difference. That is the main thing about the HTML hypertext markup language. So that means which contains hypertext means links which navigates through the pages so hypertext transfer protocol so is a is a protocol for transmitting the hypertext documents so that is the reason you'll be able to see http and also html so http transfers the hypertext documents those are nothing but such as html it was designed for communication between the web browser and the web server but it can also be used for other purposes also mainly the http is designed for communication between the web browser web browsers means nothing but the chrome edge and all those things are web browsers and web servers so web servers are so you'll be having nginx ias these are the things you'll be having but it can also be used for the other purposes http follows the classical client server model so if you are aware of this client server model i will try to explain you so it follows the principle client server model so that means what is this client server model when a client opening a connection to make a request so that means here the client is nothing but a browser so the browser opens a connection to make a request so that means he is asking something then wait until it receives a response so it is it is making a request to waiting in order to get something and it waits until it, until it gets a response or message or anything so then after it finishes that's it so that means we can say that http is a stateless protocol so this is one of the important thing you need to understand http is a stateless protocol meaning that the server does not keep any record between the two requests for example let's say that a browser has asked the server that i want some so and so data okay so it has made a request to the server and the server has provided information to this Again, the same user, that means the same client, the same browser has asked for another set of data. Now the server does not contain any information regarding that the previous request which was made by the same browser. So it is, it is that same browser or not. The server cannot maintain the information regarding that one. So that means every request the browser, so it may be a different browser, it may be the same browser. So if every request making to the server, so the server does not maintains any records so that means when a client makes a request the client makes a request to the server a connection is established between these two until the response is transmitted when the response is transmitted immediately the connection between the browser and the server is disconnected so that's it so that is the reason it is a stateless protocol so that means the browser and server does not have a state so that means does not the, the server does not know that okay this browser has asked me previously regarding some data so now this time this browser is asking another for another data so like this it will not uh, have any information regarding that one that is the reason http is a stateless protocol 
every request is a new for a server thing so it it will maintain in a such a way that okay request is came i will send the response that's it so that the duty or task for the server has been finished bit for the browser now again if the browser wants another data means it needs to make a new request again to the server that is the reason http is a protocol for fetching resources such as html documents as we already discussed in the first time only http is a protocol for fetching the html documents it is the foundation of any data exchange on the web and it is a client server protocol which means requests are initiated by the recipient usually the web browser this is all we have already discussed with the brief thing. clients and servers communicate by exchanging individual messages the messages are sent by the client usually a web browser are called requests and the messages sent by the server as an answer are called responses so the terminology in the http is nothing but clients and servers uh, server communicate by exchanging messages messages means nothing but when a client sends a message it is called as a request when a server sends a message it is called a response so these are the so client made a request means so client has made sent a message to the server and the server has sent a response means so for that message it has given a another message so this is the call is called request response so normally we used to call so whatever the message that the browser sent is called as a request and whatever the message that the server sent is called a response http is a client server protocol requests are sent by one entity, one entity the user agent or a proxy on behalf of it so it can be anything so it can be a browser or anything so requests are not only sent by the browser it's a browser not only with the browser so any proxies also any intermediate any user agent we can set it so that is the reason we call it as an user agent most of the time the user agent is a web browser only but it can be anything for example a robot that crawls the web to populate and maintain a search engine index so you'll be having so we can have a program something like that cron pro jobs and all those things so we can we can uh, uh, create a request and send to the server through the programming also we can do it the browser also does the same thing so like this you will be having different types of uh, different ways are there for sending a request to the server in that bro web browser is one of the uh, one of the one of the uh, one of the things which sends, which sends a request to the server each individual request is sent to a server which handles it and provides an answer called the response we have already discussed right so when a request is sent by the server so that means when a message is sent to the server by the client it handles it, so it, it, it parses it and all those things it will do it and it will provide an answer called the response. Between the client and the server, there are numerous entities collectively called proxies. So now if between the client and server, so there intermediately there will be numerous multiple layers will be there. So those are called as in proxies, which perform different operations and act as a gateways or caches. So before going into the server, so you can have a numerous proxies in between the client and server. So which goes through a different ways of gateways or caches everything it will be having so the, the typical representation pictorial representation will be like this so you'll be having a client is nothing but a browser now it sends a request when it is trying to send a request to the server so the, the request that doesn't directly goes to the server in intermediately you will be you can maintain a proxies that before going to the server you can filter these messages that any bad messages are coming so any anything unidentified messages are coming so to filter out to act as a gateways like this you can maintain a proxies so just if there, these are proxies are nothing but relays which receives and passes it up, passes it on and here also server it receives and passes it on so proxies acts as an intermediately and you will have a little bit of a gateways or any filterization will be there so in order to cache is and all the before uh, for example if the same data you can maintain a, instead of going to the server and parsing it out so you can have a commonly used responses in the proxies and you can immediately send the response to the client before instead of going it to directly to the server so like this you can have a proxies so first you learn about the client and the user agent so client means uh, this this is the thing which sends a request the user agent is is any tool so it can be any tool it can be a browser or programming or anything that acts on behalf of the user this role is primarily performed by the web browser normally but it may also be performed by programs used by engineers and web developers to debug these applications so that we can have a different types of web developers we can have different types of tools for making the http requests and all those things 
but primarily the user agent normally we call it as a web browser to display a web page the browser sends an original request to fetch the html document that represents the page okay it then parses this file making uh, it then parses this file means browser browser then so when it when it gets a response that html document when it gets the browser gets the response html document then the html document is parsed by the browser making additional requests corresponding to the execution of so inside that uh, html document you may be having a v images link scripts link css link you will be having so many things again it will make an additional request to get those information and it will all combine these all the things browser and it will show you the output so that is the main thing happens first whenever it sends a request first it will send a request <clears throat> and the server will give the html document inside this html document you can have a links to the script css files images videos so anything it may have in now it parses the html file browser and it will it finds some some of the links and it will again make to the server the same request i want the script files and all those things and again it will, it will give a response so combinedly combining those all information it will give you an output the web browser then combines these resources to present the complete document the web page scripts executed by the browser can fetch more resources in later phases and the browser updates the web page accordingly now next one is a web server <clears throat> on the opposite side of the communication channel is the server so that is the main thing so on the opposite side of the communication you have a server so now this side so sending a request you observe that it is a web client user agent now receiving the request and sending a response so that that side you will be having a server which serves the document requested by the client a server appears as only a single machine normally a server appears as only a single machine virtually but it may actually contain a uh, collection of servers sharing the load so that is a different concept so normally you can think that server is a single machine virtually next one is the proxies we also seen about this proxies right between the web browser and the server numerous computers and machines relay the http messages relay means receives and pass on so between the web browser and web server we have see, seen the numerous proxies will be there due to the layer structure of the web stack most of these operate at the transport network or physical layer physical levels when a client wants to communicate with the server either the final server or an intermediate proxy it follows the following it, follow, it performs the following steps so now when a client makes a request to the server either to the final server or between the intermediate proxy so normally it goes through the following steps let's try to see it first it opens a tcp connection okay so the tcp connection is used to send a request or several and receive an option the client may open a new connection, reuse an existing connection, or open several TCP connections to the server. So this is one of the thing. Send an HTTP message. The HTTP message before HTTP are human readable. So messages we will try to tell you. I will learn more about these HTTP messages. Nothing but HTTP messages are requests and the responses. We will try to learn more about these HTTP responses. Normally, we HTTP messages are sent by the client. That is nothing but a request. So you will be having a human readable before http2 so after HTTP, when this http2 new protocol uh, the http second version has been in, introduced so these http messages are transferred into a binary format something like frames we call it as a frames so making them impossible to read directly so the principle and the fundamentals is basically remains the same only but you need to understand that it will send an http messages say message means request and then after it will uh, the server will give you a response and the browser parses that response and shows the output in the browser so this is how actually the process goes on so this is what about the http basics things normally what you need to understand is http is hypertext transfer protocol first one you need to understand it is a stateless protocol so this is all about this basic introduction of this http so then afterwards we, in next video we will learn about the url what is an url how we can identify the web page and all those things let's try to see it hope you understood about this http protocol if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you